as we read carefully through the lives of each of the Imams, we discover that all of the Imams, each of them individually, encompasses within his life all the possible virtues given by God. But that in each Imam's life, there are one or two virtues that stand out in particular. So, for example, as we examine the life of Al Hussein, we see the virtue of determination, his rugged, rigorous determination that injustice will not be allowed to prevail, that the model of society proposed by Yazid will not be allowed or permitted to overcome or supplant the model of society proposed by God in divine revelation. In Zain al-Abidin, we see the virtue of holiness, the man of prayer, the man of penance, the man of weeping and of fasting, the man whose supplications to God have become one of the most valuable resources for those who seek to follow a spiritual life that is truly submitted to God. His sahifa should be on everybody's bedside table as a way of ending the day with those supplications that he has left us. Al-Baqir and Jaffa al-Sadiq are the great theologians. These are the men who are able to formulate the theology by which we put our lives, our spiritual lives, into praxis, by which we live out the revelation that God has offered us. But it can be truthfully said that all of these virtues stand out most especially in the life of Ali bin Abi Talib and that he is, in these days of Muharram, at the core and at the centre. The famous mystic Jalal al-Din Rumi says that in his spiritual trance, in his, in his pr most profound prayer, he is a lover of Ali and his whole being cries out, Ali, Ali, that Ali is for him the true lawgiver, the true guide, the true inspiration. And Ali is, for all of those who would live Islamic faith, the inspiration of how one should follow the Prophet. I followed him, says Ali, I followed in his footsteps like a young camel following its mother. And so I propose to you in these days that the figure of Ali is the summation of all of the Imams, as one day Al-Mahdi will be the summation of all of the Imams and that he is a perfect model and guide for those who would live out their Islamic faith. He is a guide of prayer and spirituality. He is a guide in how to understand the theology, the, the message of God made accessible to us. He is a model in jurisprudence and how to live the law of Islam, both in its spirit and also in its letter. He is a model of how we should treat other people, one another. He is remembered especially for the way in which he treated those of other faiths and other religious systems, for his insistence upon a gentleness and an openness to those who did not share his Islamic faith. And so Ali becomes for us a contemporary model, not just a man of his time, but a man who spans the centuries and whose wisdom recorded in his theology, in his letters, in his writings, and his spirituality recorded in his prayers that he passed on to us, these become for us texts which each of us can use now in the 21st century to draw ever closer to God. And so in these days of Muharram, I place before you this extraordinary figure of Ali who who stands in history, towers over so many others in his closeness to God, in his faithfulness to Islam, in his love for the Prophet. I propose him to you as a perfect model of life, whether it be in family, whether it be a work ethic. I propose him as a model of whatever it is you are building, whether you are building a relationship or a dignity, whether you are building a reputation, 
whether you are building a family or a marriage, whether you are building a future, whatever it is you are building, I propose that Ali should be in the plans, that he should be within the walls of what you are building as the one who points to the way things are done best.